Hi, I'm Exesis, and this is Victoria 3. And today we're starting a playthrough as Prussia. But our story does not start in Germany. It starts down here on the Levant. We are currently located in uh, just south of Beirut, north of Jerusalem. And uh, around here there's a town called Acre. And in this town there was an order that was founded. The Order of Brothers of the German House of St. Mary's in Jerusalem. Uh, more commonly known as the Teutonic Knights. And this is where our story is. Prussia starts, because today we're playing as Prussia. We're going to be unifying Germany, or the German Empire, and doing the setup for what was to become the two world wars. And a little bit of background history for that, of course. So down here in the Levant, the Teutonic Order stayed for quite some time. And uh, they then moved on up into Venice for a brief period of... Uh, I don't know, two decades maybe, and after which they moved over east again into Transylvania, the mountains around here, to uh, protect the Hungarians against the the uh, Kulaks, I think, or uh, some, something similar, they were coming in from the east. Uh, they fell out of... Uh, favor with the Hungarians and uh, they then were taken in by the Polish in uh, what we now know as uh, Prussia. It was uh, known as Prussia back then too, but the Prussians of the old Prussia were uh, different. And the, so somewhere around here I think is uh, Marienberg, which was where they then based out of for the uh, following 600 years or something like that. And they were fighting mostly against the uh, Baltic states up here, against the uh, heathens. They were a Catholic order, of course. They were part of the Crusades. And they then switched over to being Protestant. And uh, managed to reign in uh, Brandenburg and unify into Prussia. Uh, after the Napoleon Wars, then in there was a peace conference in Vienna. And Prussia also got some territory over here. They had some small states over here before, but they got Rhineland and Westphalia, I believe, from the peace treaty in Vienna of uh, 1815. And that's kind of where our, our playthrough starts here. Okay, so welcome to Prussia. And Prussia is... Uh, you can actually start up here. We're at the... Uh, sort them by rank. We're the fifth uh, highest prestigious country in the world after Austria, France, Russia and Great Britain. We don't have a very high GDP. So we are a bit further down on that list. Uh, still the same uh, nations above us. Uh, standard of living. We can't even see where we ended up. We're probably way down here then. Yeah, we're down here. Way, way, way down. So the standard of living is uh, bad in our country. And we've only got 13 million population, so we're not doing that well there either. And let's uh, sort that by the correct length. We do have a military. It's not that big compared to the other majors. I've got 150 regular troops, but these troops are good. We have... Uh, yeah, we can check out the barracks over here. We have skirmish infantry and uh, mobile artillery. And this is the best text anyone starts with in the game. I believe the British are also on the same level. And the French should also be on the same level. We can come over here and we can check them out. No, they don't have mob. Yeah, they've got mobile artillery. And the, the French should have the same. I think Austria might be a tech level behind on... Yeah, they're still on line infantry. But they've got mobile artillery. And the Danes up here, which is uh, also something that we'll have to look into. They're on line infantry as well. So, um, we can start by taking that one down. And on the outlier here, we want to bring up our interest groups. The interest groups are important. They are what constitutes your government. So at the moment we have the... We can see this icon here. We have the Junkers and the Armed Forces in the... Uh, 
government and the Junkers are happy. So we get extra influence from them being happy. Uh, that's uh, this one here, which uh, most importantly, anything extra. This is used for all of our uh, political uh, things. But most importantly, we got the infamy DK here. So we start off with a, a bunch of kind of uh, notifications here. Uh, we can clear them out by just going over. So the custom unions with Lipe here is uh, not doing that good. And uh, we got some expensive goods, clippers and paper. We'll have to look into that too. We've got low market access in Westphalia. We're going to look into that in a bit too. And Silesia has a problem with its taxation capacity. There's uh, too much population and too little government going on there. We got. Uh, it's also telling us that we have no active research. But uh, let's start off with our politics. So this is our current government. They are both happy, and uh, we are an absolute monarchy. Our absolute monarchy. We have. Uh, if we go to laws here, we have the, the monarchy as the government principle and uh, an autocratic distribution of power. Uh, we are only allowing a cultural a cultures of the same kind to be. Uh, yeah. There's, uh, we've got a bunch of them. We've got professional army down here, which is an important one. Because this makes our makes it so that we have a professional army, of course. So we have to build our barracks. If you have national militia, you rely on conscriptions. And the same thing for peasant levies or mass conscription, of course. And in very different, very different degrees. Professional army, we use the barracks and we have a standing army. We have our econo economic system, which we're doing quite well on. We've got interventionism, which is a good one for where we are at the moment. And probably we're going to stick to this one for the entire game. Uh, we've got mercantilism. Protectionism would be better, but uh, mercantilism is good enough for us. Uh, free trade takes away all the tariffs, so we don't make any money from the trade routes, but we can have a lot bigger trade routes. Good if you have a small country that needs to import a lot of things, for example. Yeah, isolationism uh, is to protect your market completely. It means that no trades can take place with your country. You can't import, you can't export. So you need to be self-sufficient. Right? That's a big uh, deep of the technology spread as well. Uh, we don't have any colonial affairs. This is something that we want to change. We have a police force. This is good. We have public schools, which is really good. So we have some uh, education access, which increases the uh, amount of uh, qualifications we can get for our industries, so we can have a more qualified workforce. We don't have a healthcare system, and we want to look into fixing this. We're probably going to go with charity hospitals to keep the church happy. and. Uh, because the uh, uh, private health uh, insurance, we need to keep uh, our population. This one increases as the wealth of the population increases. And public health is uh, its a bit away and it's... We've only got one interest group that supports it. And it's the trade unions that are, are very unhappy and are absolutely tiny in our country. And it takes a long time until we get charity hospitals we can get fairly soon. But we're going to start off with colonial affairs here. And we got colonial resettlement, which is good for the migra migration attraction. It'll make more of your citizens move down into the colony. Uh, good if you're colonizing areas close by, like for America that's colonizing the west. I believe this would be very good. Uh, colonial exploitation is more for the classical colonialism, where we want to extract as much resources as possible, as cheaply as possible, from the colonial states. Uh, we are the burgeoning German Empire, and this is what we want. We need some... We are way behind on the rest of Europe on colonizing uh, primarily Africa, so we need to get in on that train as soon as possible. 
Uh, we are also allowing our children to work. Uh, ideally, we would have them in school, but uh, uh, same thing here. This is not the easiest thing to pass through. Intelligentsia could help us to pass this through if we were to give it enough time. Um, but we also need human rights for that, which we don't have. For the uh, restricted child labor, only the trade unions support that. So that's not going to happen. So until then, they're perfect workers for our minds, and we got a lot of them. Uh, we got no social security, and uh, the big one down here is also no migration controls, which means that uh, our borders are open. Which means we have a lot of immigration, especially from our market. So the Prussian market encompasses all of these small nations, and these small nations will join us once we have researched a certain technology. Uh, one by one, of course, and each one that joins us will increase our infamy. And uh, this will slowly take down, so it's going to take some time to get all of these integrated. But we can start working on making sure that they want to be integrated. Uh, let's finish off the, uh, the politics here. We are currently trying to enact the colonial affairs. Success chance of 14%. But uh, the industrialists also support this. So we probably want to have the industrialists into the... No, I want to st stick around here. Uh, if we were to bring the industrialists in, our legitimacy would fall. Because the size of government is larger. But... Uh, Nothing else. It's forced by 22 by bringing in the intelligentsia, which also supports the uh, colonialism. And 26. So we're probably going to go with the intelligentsia this time. We're going to be reforming this uh, as much as we need to. Now they are our king, Frederick Wilhelm von Hohenzollern. I think that's Wilhelm the second. And this would be Wilhelm the third. Uh, he is part of the armed forces. He is supply requisitionist expert. Doesn't make anything for him as a leader. And as a leader, he's got interest group political strength. Uh, that's uh, no as ruler, of course. So political strength of officers. So he makes the uh, armed forces stronger. We want the armed forces to be strong. I uh, reduce the cost of military technology if they like us. This one will activate as soon as we unpause, as will the patriotic fervor, which increases our offense and defense of all our military, which is also really good. If we get them above 20%, these numbers will double. That means 30% offense, 30% defense. Really good. Uh, same thing goes for things like the Junkers here. We gain extra influence. Influence allows us to do our politics and allows us to keep infamy decay. And uh, we're going to need quite a lot of infamy decay later on. And this one's also good to get the investment pool contribution from the aristocrats. And we want to keep the Junkers in power because uh, they get a certain leader later on that we want to help with unifying Germany. Let's confirm this change in government. We brought the intelligence in. They are not very happy with us. Uh, they strongly oppose national supremacy, the local police force, and child labor. But overall, they've got a few uh, positives there as well. They would, of course, uh, decrease society costs. So if we were to get them to happy, that would be very good for what we're going to be researching in the beginning of the game. And uh, getting them up to propagandists would make uh, our nation more attractive to immigrate to uh, all the different now we're going to get the rural folk they're angry they don't like the law we're trying to pass because that's going to steal their jobs they of course want to make all the sugar and fruit domestically and uh, so we're going to get this technology spread debuff from them this will uh, slowly tick away because they um, it decays over to one over the last over the following uh, 60 months so over the following uh, five years 
as well slowly take down. And we can do things to make them happy later on along the line too. So as for technology, well let's uh, first actually, we can probably go in here and we can declare some interests. Now we want to have an interest in uh, Italy, we want to know what's happening down there. And uh, we are also going to be trying to get a head start on our colonies. So let's uh, select some interests down here in Africa. And we can see if we can grab some colonies down here. You can see that the Danes are down here colonizing. The French are down here colonizing. The British are down here colonizing. And the Portuguese. So they've all started already. And we haven't even unlocked the ability to come down here and start our colonies just yet. Uh, usually good places to start off would be good Igbo here. You can see there's loads of room for plantations. And we've got down here we've got a few other ones. And let's see, Suze is usually one you can get into. It's a smaller one but you can go into these ones as well. And uh, we've got down here in uh, Southern, uh, what's it called? South Cameroon. There's also a decent amount of, uh, and both of these are the same state, so that's about 80 you can use there. We're going to try to uh, grab Ing Igbo here in the Niger Delta. It's a really good one to have. We don't need to put too much uh, effort into colonizing it. So hopefully we'll be, that will still be free when we have there. And we've got uh, South Cameroon here as a second one. But uh, these places have malaria. Uh, a lot of this Africa has uh, malaria. And then there are places like down here which have severe malaria. And uh, this of course is not good for colonizing. It's minus 90% colonial growth speed. So uh, these colonies down here, if we were looking at the... As you can see, the Danes here have 5,000 days until their colony expands. And that's uh, quite a long time. So we want to get rid of malaria so we not get, don't get stuck in the same. We've got three text screens. Production, military and society. Uh, and we want to go down to get some military text here, of course, later on as well. Uh, it's a bunch of production texts here that are really good, especially these three down here and the Bessemer process here is going to help us kickstart and uh, nitroglycerin for our mines. And uh, the way this works is that it's uh, with the different tiers. So once we have all of the uh, text from one tier, the next tier gets cheaper. But it doesn't prevent you from going down, so we could go for anarchism now if we wanted to. This is a tier 3 tech, it's going to cost us 32,000. And we are making 58 per day or per week, which is not a lot. So if we were to complete all of these level 2 ones, including these down here, these would get cheaper. And uh, we want to start to help out with our colonies. We want to get down to K9 or Q9, because this... Uh, removes the effects of malaria in our colonies. Does not remove the effects of severe malaria. We need to get down all the way here to tier 4 malaria prevention for the severe malaria to get removed. To get uh, quinine we need to have pharmaceuticals. So we're going to start off with pharmaceuticals here. Another important one for us is nationalism and uh, down here later on to pan-nationalism. This will allow us to unify Germany, but we need to improve our relations a little bit before we can do anything with that anyway. So let's start off with the pharmaceuticals. And let's uh, go back up to Prussia. Now let's start to see what we can do with our political situation. So we've got uh, all of these small states here. Now right now we're in the uh, diplomatic screen so we can see which countries like us and which countries don't. So the Russians and the Swedes like us, there's a few of these, uh, Württemberg, Saxony, and actually Oldenburg and Han Bremen, and uh, Lübeck likes us as well. Uh, Hans Oler and are puppets, so they like us really much. And uh, the, that's like the Dutch and the Belgians and the 
Austrians don't really like us, the French and the, the French uh, have a conciliatory attitude towards us. So they, they, they should be greener, I would say. Well, anyway, um, so we can see kind of where we're at. We want to be at uh, really good relations with all of these states once we hit nationalism. So we're going to start improving relations with them. And there's a few of these here up that we might need to sway a little bit in a different way. But uh, we can start with improving relations. And uh, we have this one down here. We have Lippe, which really doesn't like us. So uh, let's start improving relations with them. And we can see they show up here. And this is going to take quite some time. And they are in our customs union. So they will go up towards 80. We need to be above 80 here to be able to actually be integrated. And our infamy needs to be lower. And everyone we integrate needs uh, or gets even more infamy as well. We also want to start increasing our influence with... Uh, Hamburg, Bremen, Oldenburg, and Hanover. Because these states... Oh, and actually Brunswick as well. These states here are not in our customs union. They are in the British customs union. Or British market. And they are in a customs union with England. And we want to snag them away from there. So by, we want to start by improving our relationships there, of course. Uh, Lübeck likes us. Mecklenburg is a bit cautious. Mecklenburg is a quite big state, so we might want to improve relations with them early on as well. And the same thing here, because uh, of course our country is split into two if we get out from the market view again. You can see that uh, Hessel Kessel would be a good state for us to grab so that our uh, nation is continuous. And now we can see that with the 500, we have a 34% excess influence. That gives us 8.6 infamy decay. Well, at the moment, we don't have any infamy, so we can uh, afford to have a little bit more on uh, improving our relations. We can also always stop improving relations to bring that up once we start getting some infamy. So let's uh, grab some more here. And then we have another 200. And this costs 150 per nation. And uh, do we want to go with Anhalt maybe? Or maybe Schoenberg dip? Uh, probably Saxony. That's the top of our relationship with Saxony there as well. So we don't have a lot of uh, space left here anymore. And each member of our customs union also costs uh, influence to upkeep. So that's uh, quite a lot of them. That's 10 more and 10 more. And then uh, there we have all the improved relationships. Now we're not getting any infamy, extra infamy decay. But since we don't have any infamy yet, it doesn't really matter. So uh, this diplomatic pact thing is going to get sorted out. Now we need to go into our uh, this unused construction, of course, we're going to be fixing soon. Uh, we can fix that right now actually if we go into here we can see that we have a low taxation capacity in Silesia let's uh, close the diplomatic one down here so in uh, Breslau we are collecting 20% less taxes than we should be doing we can see down here that the taxation is uh, 8000 and expenses is only from the barracks here and this is the taxes, ta taxes we are bringing in. So we can increase this by 20%. So we'll, it's about 2,000. That's uh, quite a lot considering our balance at the moment. So we want to go in here and want to add some government administration. Now these add 15 taxation capacity each. And if we look down here, we are missing... Uh, what's that? 13 plus uh, 33. So uh, 46 uh, taxation capacity. So we're going to need four of these. Population will be increasing as well. So we might as well get that up. This also has the positive effect of giving us bureaucracy. Which is a different kind of uh, balance that we also need to keep track of. 
Uh, this will of course increase our use of paper. Uh, we can't see that just yet there, but uh, if we go on the... Yeah, we're going to be using, if we show per level, we've got 20, 20 paper needed per level of this. It's going to use 80 more paper for this uh, government administration in Silesia once they are done. We also have low market access in Westphalia. This is another one of our problems. And uh, that comes from infrastructure usage being higher than the infrastructure. To, to fix this, we right click and we select. Uh, where are you? Uh, no, we don't have the. We should have the. Yeah, okay. So we need to go into here on the political lens, decrease, and we should be able to select the road maintenance from here. Put that into Westphalia. This will give us 25% more infrastructure here. Uh, we could, we've got plenty of uh, authority. We could pop that in here on uh, Silesia as well, and this would shave uh, one week off or 10% off. One and a half weeks off each government building we are building here. And that wouldn't be entirely bad either. And we might be able to use our authority for covering up the uh, deficit we have here instead. So we'll see if we have any authority left after we've covered this up. But now if we go into Westphalia, we can see that we now have 43 infrastructure here. Now, this is a temporary boost. It costs us authority to upkeep this road maintenance. So our preferred method would be to go in and build either ports or railways. Westphalia is landlocked, so railways. But for railways, we need engines. And to make engines, we need to start up a motor industry. This is going to be a priority for us as well, but uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. So let's use this one as a temporary one. Uh, because here in Westphalia we have our steel mills and this is something we of course want to keep building. Now steel is very cheap, it's only used for tools. I think the tools are made down here in Rhineland. Uh, you can always press on the tools here and go to the market and potentials uh, production. So we can see in our nation the only place producing tools is Rhineland. Now we can also see consumption which of course is all over, especially down here in Silesia, where we've got a lot of mines. The potentials is good if you're building or if you're looking at a raw resource. We can use the back screen here if we were to look at wood, for example. We can go and we can see the potentials for wood and we can see which states are good for extracting lumber. Well, Russia is good, they've got lots of it. Sweden is good, they've got lots of potential as well. Uh, we don't have that much potential for wood, unfortunately. We've got some in Anhalt and some in Westphalia. And uh, down here in Bavaria is a, is a good one. I think we have the Black Forest down here, don't we? That's uh, maybe down here in Baden. Yeah. And that uh, increases the amount of logs they are able to extract. Uh, Sweden has the same thing, except it's even better, of course. So uh, we fixed that problem with the low market access. As soon as the uh, week ticks by, this will fix. This will have to build away. This diplomatic pact will fix itself once the relationship improves with Blippe. We want to recruit an admiral here. Let's put him on. We can see here the units. It's the red one there. And we get to choose between uh, the Junkers uh, Admiral Rupert von Kleefeld or Niklaus Bromi from the armed forces. Uh, they both have exactly the same stats at the moment. So if we look here we can see that they, the interest group, no that's as an interest group leader, neither of them are that at the moment. So they are just commanders there. So it, uh, in, in this case, it really doesn't matter which one we pick. Uh, let's pick the... Uh, well, we know we're going to want to keep the Junkers in, in command, so... Or in government for quite a bit. So now, now we got rid of that notification at least. But we can start here. We can start ticking and we will see our budget tick over. We'll wait for this week to pass 
obviously where the budget is at then. Now the budget has stabilized a little bit, we are constructing. So we want to see if we can do something to decrease this deficit. Well, we got a consumption tax on liquor. That's bringing us about 9,000 a week. We could tax services, so it'll bring us 12,000, cost 200 authority. Yeah. I can't see the liquor one here, but that one costs us 100 and brings us in 9,000. So this is 6,000 per 100. It's not quite as good as the liquor, but everyone needs services and services are seemingly quite fine to tax. Uh, luxury goods is another good one, but we don't have very many affluent pops in our country just yet. So they're not buying very much lux luxury furniture or clothes, so we're not making that much money on it. And the same thing with wine is a luxury drink, of course. Now, furniture, clothes and grain is really expensive and the grain will actually only give us 3,000 per 100, uh, 100 authority so it's not really worth it either. It'd be just as well to put in luxury furniture. But services is a, is a pretty good return on our investment here at the moment. That'll, we can run a little bit of a deficit of course. We will be building our way out of this. We have the, uh, and down here we've got wages, so we've got wages for the government, and uh, up here. This will uh, make the uh, Intelligentsia and Petite Bourgeois uh, lose approval. And if we right click here we get rid of that, and we can see if we were to make the, uh, the Intelligentsia at the moment are at minus one. If they were to go to minus five, we would gain 10% less prestige. And if we were to get them to plus 5, we get minus, oh, uh, minus 10 society costs. So this one would be good. And unfortunately, they're at minus 1. So getting them to plus 5 would not help here at the moment in getting that one. Even though they are in government. And we can, if we hover over here, we can see why. So they need to change at least one of the laws here for them to become more and then they're opposed to autocracy and to national supremacy and to the local police force and the child labor but they are endorsing this one so this should bring them to plus one I thought so no of course it's not we wanted to get the we should have brought the industrialists in not the intelligentsia So we, if we look here, we can see that it's the industrialists that endorse this, not the intelligentsia. The intelligentsia, I think, endorse... No, they don't do anything there. Okay, so let's go into the government and let's kick the intelligentsia out again. And bring the industrialists in instead. And then this is the way we wanted to have it from the start. And now this will bring our success chance up to 27%. And the rural folk are not happy with us, but we knew about that already before. And the industrialists, now that they are in government, are happy. And it gives us production technology cost. We're not doing that at the moment. And the intelligentsia, we can't do anything about. But we could uh, bring them down. Yeah, and you can see this reduces our prestige directly. And that's how other nations see us. So. And we'd only save... Uh, 3,000 on it. Bringing down the military wages will bring us off the patriotic fervor. But that doesn't really matter at the moment. Neither does training rate nor military wages. So we can save some money here by going down on very low military wages. Uh, this of course will hurt our standard of living for our military pops. And uh, immediately we lose the patriotic fervor. Uh, it's easy enough to get it back though. Because all we need to do is uh, increase the taxes there again. Or increase the wages and they will be happy again. And they will be up to the next one. 
Now we probably want to increase the speed a little bit here. So now we can see that we this one is yellow again. So we have something new happening. We can see here that expensive government goods, tools and iron. So we need to look into probably fixing the paper first and then the tools and iron. We can check in our market here to see what we have good doing what. Okay, so welcome to the market. And uh, we've got the big pressure market, so everything produced within our market, within the highlights here, is pulled together into our market. So not everything here is produced by our own factories and farms. You can see the fertilizer we've got a lot more fertilizer than we're using. That's because we have chemical plants making it and livestock ranches making it. And there's not enough uh, people using it. We can probably fix this up. And uh, we can sort on market price. And we can see this is for all goods. You can sort them down on different ones. Uh, you can check the military ones or just check the consumer goods or basic staple goods. And these are good to keep track of for your, at least for us at the moment, since we're impoverished. Uh, luxury goods is more important once you start getting more affluent uh, citizens in your country. So we can see that uh, luxury clothes at the moment are super expensive, but there's not very many people buying them, so they can just wear regular clothes for now, which are also expensive. And that's something we might want to look into. We got a deficit of 270 clothes. Now we kind of want to try to move away from these. Grain, however, is not very good that it's a deficit of. And uh, we've got a problem with the fertilizer, so maybe we can do something about that. Let's go into the buildings here and into rural. We can make sure everyone's using soil enriched farming. And we're probably using a bunch of different production methods. Now switching over to apple orchards would make liquor very expensive and sugar very cheap. And switching over pot to potatoes would also probably not be a good idea. We need more grain, not less. And switching over to production tools here would and we can probably get away with going removing the tools from here we need the tools in other sectors at the moment this will employ more people so make the farms less profitable and laborers are paid even less than farmers and so these laborers they are just hauling things around uh, whilst the uh, farmers here, they earn more money than the laborers. So we want to reduce the amount of laborers in our country in the long run. But in the uh, in the short run, a laborer is better than a peasant. So uh, bring on the uh, ox power plows. And I think we will do the same thing here, just to save a little bit on our tools. And here we are currently making wine. And if we hover over wine here, we can see that wine is perfectly priced at the moment. So well, we're not going to touch that. We are using our fertilizers in our wheat farms as well. Our uh, livestock ranches are using intensive grazing. They are producing all that fertilizer. And uh, there's not really, really a lot we can, well, we could save some tools by going here. You can see in meat. We have a surplus of 33 meat. We probably don't want to mess too much with that either. At least for now, we'll let them use the tools to keep the meat in balance. So we, we need to do some constructing if we want to get the grain prices down. Uh, sweeteners, we could be using a lot more sugar. That would cost us 75 sugar. And this would increase the amount of uh, groceries we make. And why would the... The price should not go up once we produce more. Uh, 
because we clear out that market balance. And to, but we would need more sugar, and that sugar comes from beets, of course. That almost covers the deficit by switching to apple orchards. But that makes uh, liquor expensive. Liquor we need. We we'll probably need yeah patent stills. And we can uh, we can research those in a bit. That would give us more liquor. Okay, but we want to yeah, we can yeah, let the, let the game run, of course. Now uh, we can check down here. We're producing at the lowest level of fertilizer, so we can't really do very much about our fertilizer price, I think. Uh, eventually we want to pop up here to standardized filing cabinets. Everywhere. And we probably want to keep the clergymen in here because we want to have some power to the church. philosophy department would probably be a good upgrade. We want to do something about our paper there too. We are using sulfite pulping, we just need more paper mills. So we are stuck waiting for construction and in a lot of these different areas. So we've got our construction tab here, we're currently building these uh, administrations and after that we probably want to look into these uh, government goods so we can start off with paper. Iron and tools is a more complicated chain and they kind of rely on each other. But uh, we can take that after we fix the paper deficit. So to fix the paper deficit we want to find paper here. That's under staple. That's all the way down here. And they are we are missing 200. We can right click here and we can expand the paper mills. And then we get into the screen here and we can see this number here means that we have four. There is economy of scale going on here. And we can't unfortunately see how much more it would uh, how much more paper we would get from one. We need to look at this uh, inference here soon too. We have uh, brought upon ourselves a deficit there. And we have an event going there too, so let's pause while we're doing this. If we just go up here to the paper mills and we hover, we can see that uh, we're getting 70 per level. We needed 200, so we're going to need three more paper mills. Let's queue them up here in Brandenburg. And we will go into the event we've got here, Raising Concerns. The Junkers have expressed their concerns about the government decisions clearly favoring the interests of the industrialists. And uh, then we get to pick either an interest group approval for the uh, Junkers, or, uh, or we ignore the Junkers. So this will piss the industrialists off and make the Junkers happy. And uh, this will get uh, the Junkers uh, less political strength and interest group approval. Now if we got all of these here now too of course. Let's get rid of those. And if we go all the way down here on the ledger. We can see that uh, uh, that's why we run, run into this uh, influence problem here because somehow the Junkers managed to get uh, uh, some of them got radicalized I think from from whatever there so we're getting minus one interest group uh, strength or their approval and then we lost our 20% extra influence so this would be a good chance to actually boost them up the industrialists are currently happy uh, they are boosting our technology cost this does not really matter because we're not researching any technology, production technology at the moment. We will be in a bit though, so that uh, we'll have to find a different way to boost them up. So we will uh, grab this. That will increase there as soon as we unpause here again. Then they're happy again and our influence levels are back up again. So we can uh, sort these out. The right click removes them all. 
And once this ticks around to, you can see here, the 12th of February, we have a, a chance of it, 27% chance of it being a success and a 54% chance of it advancing. Or, or we get a, a some kind of debate going. And we can see that there's a, a there's no chance of it stalling out completely. So we can see here when we're building in the building menu, we can see how many how much infrastructure we have uh, left over. Each building consumes a certain amount of infrastructure. The glasswork here has two infrastructure usage. A lot of the mines have two infrastructure usage. Uh, agriculture usually has one. Uh, some factories like the uh, Munition plants here has three, and I think the steel mills have three as well. And the motor industry also has three. Whereas the furniture one is two, and the food is two, and the arms is two. So you need to keep track so you don't overbuild. And we can also see the amount of unemployed uh, pops. So now we are building the paper mills, or we are starting to build them, I think. Now we can maybe look into this... Uh, tools shortage we had. So we've got our tool workshops down in the Rhineland and if we just hover over here we can see that we need an additional 300 and or 260 tools and to be able to produce that we can see here we were producing 80 per level and that's using steel tools. Steel at the moment is actually reasonably priced. Are we exporting anything? Yeah, we're 10, 10 of our steel is being exported or it's so almost 10%. And now it's even more. Something happened there. There's someone selling some steel to us as well. But uh, we can we can work with this. Wood is expensive, so we want to increase the... Uh, or decrease the price of wood in our market. Is anyone buying the wood from us? We have uh, no trade routes there. That's good. Um, but we want to fix this. This will be about three tooling workshops. And then the price of both steel and wood will go up. We can probably need another steel mill. We can get the Bessemer process for more steel as well. Because now we're going to be using a lot more steel for our tooling workshops. We also need more iron here. That's making this building very unprofitable and coal. So we want to look where we have a, a good place to build iron mines. And uh, in Silesia here, we have the coal mines throughput. I don't think we have anything similar for iron anywhere in our nation. We do have some extra infrastructure here from, from being on a river. No, we don't, don't have anything that makes uh, good iron mines. So it doesn't really matter where we put the iron mines. So we want to you know, select somewhere that has enough of uh, infra uh, free infrastructure. So the industrialists have started complaining about the existence of substance farms in Westphalia, stating that their undeniable inefficiency should be immediately addressed. So by doing this, we have some uh, upper strata pops become radical because there are landowners, aristocrats, that uh, own these uh, kind of farms that people are working on. Or we can uh, further degrade the, uh, the industrialists. I don't think we want to have them uh, go down even more. They seem to have been... Something has happened and they are... And because they are stronger now. Yeah. And they endorse the change of the uh, that we're making. So at the moment they are happy, but uh, it will slowly fall off this uh, law change that we're making. So uh, if we follow their advice, we will get some improved uh, migration attractiveness. Don't think we need that in Westphalia though. Got Westphalia here because uh, we have plenty of population here at the moment, but we don't really want to 
make them unhappy either. We have, if we look here at the population, we can probably see we have uh, 22,000 in the upper strata, so 5% of these would become radicals. That's uh, not a lot of radicals. We will uh, take that. And we're gonna build some. We don't really want to build in here because we've got the. Our infrastructure here is dependent on that road maintenance. But we have some free infrastructure here. I wish it would tell you exactly how much when you hover over there. But if we go into. Actually, if we pop down here, is probably the best way to build from. So if we want to build up some. We have actually got some. Yeah, but we want to build them here in the North Rhine, I think. So we've got 22 infrastructure. We can see that from the tooltip here. And that means we can build uh, divided by 2, 11 iron mines here. But unfortunately, we can't see how much iron we need. But if we go in here, wait for the tooltip to lock, and we can go up here, and we can see we need 300. And uh, we can also see that each iron mine will give us 40. So having 10 of them will be 400. And uh, we'll, we'll get eight of them here in the Rhine. And if you alt click them, they will go to the top of the construction queue. At the moment, we are just queuing them up behind because we need that for the tooling workshops. Now, the tooling workshops are going to be needing more steel, but we haven't increased our steel mill just yet. We probably want to look into doing that as well. And the steel mill is going to consume another 80 iron if we add another one. Let's queue up another one up there. Then we'll queue up another two iron mines there to cover the new steel mill. Then we also have to look at the coal. I think this one uses 60. No, that's uh, for the total. So it's 40 iron and 30 coal per level. So we only needed one more iron mine there. And we probably want to go to Cilicia. And we'll look into coal mines here. So we currently have a deficit of 120 and it's going to be 150 once that steel mill is completed and from these we gain 40 per level so we want to add another four coal mines and we probably want to have the coal mines before the steel mill and we can probably bump them in to be built in between. Now if we do something like that we'll get a, a good distribution of them. The price will go down and we can uh, get the steel mill before we do the, the last two mines there. That should fix the tooling chain. We do need to look into wood as well and we need to start off a, a wood camp somewhere. So if we go into that's under resources as well. Logging camps require one infrastructure most of those other things, yeah, the logging camps and fishing wars require one. The mines require two. Then we can see we have, uh, and this is just the profitability it's looking at. So what we might want to do is go into the market here and we just see what happens here. Okay, so we did not pass it, but we have gotten a event because we ticked around. In the midst of the debate surrounding colonial exploitation, one of the country's leading playwrights strongly associated with the armed forces has staged a widely acclaimed play whose politically laden theme makes no secret of the author's desire for the law to be passed. And this, is, uh, this one means that this is the default pick. And we can uh, got three different ones here. So we can get some prestige that will allow us to roll at 28%. And we get some uh, interest group uh, popularity attraction, so they will grow faster. Or we can choose to a 10% increase for the enactment success. That will increase this number by 10% units, so up to 38. So we will take that. And it gives us a bigger chance of completing it the next time around. Okay, so they are we're selling some artillery there. Let's get rid of those. And soon uh, the rural folk will be kind of over their unhappiness here. And uh, we'll 
start getting a shared technology again or more of it we needed to look into wood then we want to go in here and see the potentials because there is uh, economies of scale at work so the more of a more of the same building you have in the same region the uh, the better these buildings are at extracting and this is especially true of course for base goods that don't require any input and uh, we can see here in uh, east prussia we can have uh, uh, we have got a base potential of uh, 1020 Silesia is quite good as well uh, Anhalt is quite good will be even better once uh, we've incorporated uh, this part here Baden is not very good but it has that throughput bonus and I think maybe I'm unsure if uh, Württemberg here and Hansolern are part of uh, Baden or not and Bavaria here has uh, decent qualities as well, but it's going to be some time before we can look at these. So the best place for us to build wood at the moment, or lumber camps, would be in East Prussia. So let's go here to East Prussia. We already got five of them here. And they are producing hardwood, which is very cheap at the moment in our market, and ordinary wood. But one thing we can do is just prioritize softwood production. This will increase the amount of ordinary wood that is produced. It doesn't really affect the price because we need 400 more. And this will bring it 100 more. Hardwood, we're producing 130 too much. So getting rid of some hardwood would be good in this case. And uh, they are using uh, tools, of course. So increasing... Increasing the level of this building will increase the tool usage as well. And uh, we needed an additional 300 now since we got another 100 from uh, changing to the hardwood logging camp. We can let it tick by and it should kick in. And now we got 340 as a balance. Each logging camp produces 60. So we need to add... Uh, Let's see, what did we have there? We need to add another five, roughly. Probably six to cover uh, future expansion as well. And this will require more tools. So six of them, five of them, they require five tools per level. So it will be 30 more tools. And I think we built in enough capacity down here when we were expanding the tool workshops for... for this so we've got 260 and they're making a hundred and something per level 80 per level so we're getting it uh, 240 from here yeah we probably actually need yet another tooling workshop to keep uh, the price of tools down but we might be importing or exporting some tools as well that's uh, usually the case yeah we're exporting 20 of them to Swedes, Danes, and the Hanovers, Hanoverians. Uh, we could uh, go to our rye farms, uh, wherever we can find them. Here we've got a few. And they are using... No, they shouldn't be using any tools anymore. Oh, it's because uh, some of the other nations in our Union are using them. Get this. I uh, uh, didn't click it fast enough. This market reports every month. And you can see what goes up and down in your market. And now this uh, huge. Uh, I've got loads of extra bureaucracy. It can be used for uh, trade routes to import things. And it can be used for incorporating unincorporated states. We we'll get to that in a little bit. What we could look into is uh, some of these luxury goods, like uh, clothes. Maybe we can import some of them. So if we grab some clothes here, we could... Uh, can see if we sort by productivity here. We can see that the Tuscans, they've got 10 to sell us. And no one really has a big amount of them to sell us. 
Now, the Austrians and French don't require any convoys, which of course is a good one. We've got plenty of convoys at the moment, though. Uh, let's start off an Austrian and a French one. We needed 20 of them. Uh, the French one turns out it's not profitable anymore. And it'll warn us for it in a bit, probably. So we're working on this. The clippers we are probably importing. Don't think we have a shipyard. So the clippers are expensive at the moment. Who is buying them? The port is buying them. And we are importing them from somewhere which might we might be able to increase the level of that trade route. From the British market, yeah, that should level up once uh, the need for it increases. Oh. We might be able to export some fertilizer to somewhere to bring up the price of fertilizer. Now if we go here, we got uh, fertilizer here. And it looks like the French are in need of a lot of fertilizer. How much fertilizer do we have? So if we go there, we can go here, and we can go here. We've got a hundred too much. So maybe exporting to the French is not the best idea because they're going to drain our market of it. No one else seems to need a lot of it though. Uh, we'll export to the Yeah, let's export it to the French. We can always increase our production of it instead. Yeah, so we are the the paper has gotten out of here. And clippers. We can maybe import some more of them then. Doesn't seem like the British. We should be able to see our current trade routes. No, not there. Maybe we need to go to the market view. No, we were in on the clippers here, of course. And if we check our trade routes, trade routes here, we can see that our clippers, we have one Prussian route we're importing. And it's predicted to remain at level two. And I think importing more of them would be bring us above what we're, we actually need. That's probably not a super good idea. See, we fixed the price of uh, fertilizer at least. Now it's plus twenty-one percent instead. So now we now we actually have a deficit of fertilizer, and this uh, might be easier to deal with. And we're making some money off it, of course, and our uh, all of our ranches will also be making money off it. If we check here that. Now they can sell the fertilizer for a big cost, which means they make more money. And they still they've got a, mm, expensive goods there too. Now we're getting ready for the next batch of colonial exploitation. But uh, I think that's going to be all for this episode. So let's uh, get out of the trade view and uh, I hope you enjoyed this series. It's, uh, we're going to do something about this next turn because we are making too much money. And this means we can uh, make or fix this up. Actually, it might not be as from the investment pool transfer, which is a, a good mechanic to keep track of. But yeah, it looks like we've been able to build ourselves out of that deficit we started with and the gold reserve is increasing again. We'll have a look at that a little bit in the next episode. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you next time.